Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 25th of August. So we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended Jeff S and Isham Ensembles. May run try out a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that will get us um, well into the first half of September. I'll get over that for you in a moment, just to say that the first video release today was our 6am UK weather forecast, and we've also released the uh, EC 30 day forecast for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well, please check out those two videos if you'd like to do that, like, share and subscribe on the videos for the content today thank you so much everybody um, for dinner, right, we're going to start off with the central England temperature as ever from Hadley, so here we go. The MECT is currently at 16.4, which is 0.6 of a degree above the 61 to 99 average. That is provisional to yesterday to the 14th of August. So, first half of August, just going to be a little bit above average, not a particularly big deviation. Uh, and we wait to see where the second half of August though. Is going to go, of course. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for that couple of weeks. London again today, the red line this is the 30 year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off about average with the upper air temperature at the moment. They're going to go warmer though as we get into the uh, end. We've got two warm ups appearing now, actually. So this is the first warm up uh, around Thursday, Friday. Then we get a dip into the weekend. And then a second warm up taking place through the early part of next week. And with that one, the GFS operational run, which is this big green line just here, it goes really quite hot, up to 20 degrees at 850 kPa. Now we saw this for the first warm up, of course, a few days ago. The GFS and its ensembles were regularly taking that warm up up towards 20 degrees at 850 kPa. You'll notice the white line, which is the ensemble, mean, doesn't get anywhere near 20 degrees at 850 kPa. So, as ever, it's a case of how warm is it going to get. We have got a lot of been saying this through the um, past week or two, have got a lot of very hot air sitting over France. A lot of the time this month, it's trying to push northwards, but the Atlantic keeps keeping it at bay. So it really is a case of the irresistible force meeting the immovable objects. It kind of like one of those uh, scenarios in the winter where we have like the plus, uh, the, the minus, I should say, 15 and 20 cells iceberg just over the other side of the uh, North Sea and, and, you know, being stopped by a pizza slice of, <laughs> of mild air from off the Atlantic. It's a little bit like that. Um, this month. It's quite a frustrating month for anybody who loves hot weather and uh, for us forecasters trying to work out what's going on. Anyway, beyond that, we're going to find that the uh, upper air temperature come down, uh, anyway, into the final week or so of August, returning back closer to average then. So, it's this third week of the month. How hot is it going to get? But has got all question marks with it. Precipitation-wise, we've got some dry weather over the next two, three, four days. Got big thunderstorms potentially come on uh, Friday night into Saturday, bringing them to the first push-up in, in the temperature. Then it goes drier over the weekend, and then possibly more thunder early next week as the weather tries to get hotter again. And through the last week of August, then it looks uh, really quite unsettled with a lot of precipitation bites. That might be down to areas of low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. So um, this stuff here, perhaps thundery, uh, and then this stuff here could be more Atlantic driven and uh, wet weather off the Atlantic. Temperature normally is uh, from the 15th to 23rd of August above average. It'll be hot as average week to come. But look how hot it is over France. <laughs> you see the potential um, that, that we've got here over the next week or so. So things are really hot. Just depends how much that hot air gets north. And precipitation anomalies from the 15th, 23rd of August. Drier than average in the south. Average a little bit wetter than average further north. Latest wind from that from Earth. No school dot net shows that low pressure is moving away into the North Sea and a ridge of high pressure starting to build through the country. So uh, that ridge is what's going to trigger the first push up in temperature for the end of the week. Right, so that brings us nicely to a chart date. We have the latest UK Met Euro run. Looking big night on Friday. High pressure is over Scandinavia by then. Low pressure out to the Atlantic and we're drawing in those very warm to quite hot sun winds. But this thundery area of low pressure then starts coming in from off the <coughs> excuse me, off the Atlantic 
uh, possibly bring some uh, thunderstorms with it. And also very windy up the western side of the coast. You've got to watch out for that too. So hot but windy, which is quite uh, quite unusual uh, pattern. But anyway, that brings some gale force winds to Ivan and a probably a push of thunder for most parts of the country uh, Friday into Saturday. Beyond that, through the uh, weekend into uh, next week, we've got low pressure out to the northwest and a big dome of heat, a big heat dome sitting just for ourselves. There's the upper air temperatures for midnight on Tuesday. See a plus 20 Celsius iceberg is up to northern France. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, everybody. My voice is a little bit croaky today. I think I might be, <laughs> might be coming down with the lurgy. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I know there's a lot going about uh, this summer. I think it's probably all of the rain. Um, anyway, let's get back to business. Hopefully, my voice will hold out. Uh, back to business. We've got minus 25 cells iceberg, more or less down across central and southern parts of France. So, like I say, this... this the pattern is very similar, very reminiscent to in the winter where we have a big freeze up just over the other side of the North Sea, but it's just never quite able to get to us, held at bay by a pizza slice of, <laughs> of mild from off the uh, Atlantic. Icon, again, with high pressure towards Scandinavia on Friday, low pressure is out in the Atlantic, drawing in most southerly south beaches. It will be quite hot at the end of the week, actually. Temperatures will be approaching 30 degrees, but not for the long. We get a push of uh, southwesterlies and thunder Friday into Saturday. And then through the rest of the weekend into next week, higher pressure starts rebuilding uh, again, probably turning things mostly dry. And we do actually get the plus 20 cells iceberg into the far southeast corner with ICOM by the uh, beginning of next week. It's midday Tuesday. So we do actually start pulling some of that very hot air into extreme southeastern corner. How further north that will go remains to be seen. This is the GFS Midnight Run. Um, once more, high pressure away to the northeast on Friday, low pressure out to west, drawing in those east-southeasterly winds. Have a push of thunder, followed by something cooler over the weekend. Into next week, high pressure again is sitting just to our south and east, low pressure away to the northwest. Those hot winds trying to come up from the south with plus 20 cells ice berm. By midnight Tuesday, is making it onto the south coast. We have got plus 15 south iceberg up to northern England, so I suspect this would get the temperature into below 30 Celsius through the early part of next week. But if we did pull up, I mean, we've got plus 25 south iceberg there into central France. If we did start pulling up this extreme heat, uh, we maintained it for a day or two, then it is possible we would get the temperatures to the mid to upper 30 Celsius. But again, I have to re emphasize that <laughs> we're just just on the edges, just on the periphery of it. That's Wednesday, and by then, maybe cooler air started coming back in from off the Atlantic, starting to keep those very hot upper air temperatures at bay. So by day 10, we've actually gone into a cooler north, northerly, northwesterly to northerly there. And the heat is being uh, moved away into central and eastern parts of uh, Europe. So, again, very, very close to pulling off some really quite extreme heat, but just not quite uh, able to. It off. By the end of the GFS run, which gets us to the 31st of August, say last day of the month, um, no pressure being wet and windy weather in from off the Atlantic. The GFS 6M, again, with that push uh, of fungi weather probably on Friday into Saturday, turns things cooler and fresher, but the hot air is only on the other side of the channel. For the early part of next week, as the high pressure ridges through Germany and Poland, that starts to allow hot air to move up from the south. Again, we see the plus 20 south side spell just making it onto the uh, Channel Coast of South East and England, plus 25 cells ice firm, getting closer to northern parts of France. Really intense heat waves come for France and down to Spain and Portugal through uh, the early part of next week, probably. Uh, again, though, that heat just being kept at bay by the areas of low pressure in the Atlantic. So that's a scenario as we up towards day 10. Just about got the plus 25 south side sperm, um, uh, plus 20 south side sperm, I should say, onto the south coast. But by day 10 itself, starting to turn thundery with a trough of low pressure. And just beyond day 10, then we bring down those cooler, fresher northerly winds again as the heat is moved away once more into Eastern Europe. And by the 26th of August, is residing from the Balkans to the Black Sea.
Uh, beyond that, increasingly unsettled and cool through the final days of August. Again, rather an autumnal look to the weather as we get towards month's end. If you enjoyed the video, I know it's quite complicated going through these charts, but if you are enjoying the video, please do you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. I hope I'm making it as simple as I can to explain, you know, what a complex scenario this is. Thank you so much, everybody. We need to put on around 40 subscribers now, I think. Get ourselves to um, 16.7k. So if you could give us a sub, it'd be amazing. Thank you so much. GM again with high pressure to the northeast of Scandinavia, low pressure out to west on Friday. Better push of thunder on Friday night into Saturday. Turns things fresher for the weekend. And then early next week, the ridge building. In a slight different position, more towards our north, actually, building more towards our north. With this cut off low underneath it, we get more of a southerly southeasterly influence and that starts to allow the heat to really push northward so out of all models the GEM gets that plus 20 cells ice berm further north actually gets it to north of the M4 um, by day 10 which is Thursday the uh, no day 9 Thursday 24th of August by day 10 possibly just started to go thundery bed with the heat being pushed away into the low countries by this area of low just here that's the cut-off low, of course. And then finally, the ECM, with the high pressure to the northeast and the low pressure to the west-southwest on Friday. So, a push of thunder, Friday night into Saturday. Then we're into both cooler, fresher conditions, but the hot air is only on the other side of the channel for the early part of next week. However, we don't really tap into it. It's kept at bay just on the other side of the channel by these cooler winds coming in from off the Atlantic. And that's the scenario with the East Shem at day 10 under rich of high pressure, mostly dry, but also um, not particularly exciting with the upper air temperatures. They're, they're actually relatively cool, especially for the north with a hot, hot upper air temperatures in the south and in the east of Europe then. This is my precipitation forecast based on the East Shem run from Tometcho.com. We are going into a few days of drier weather, but as we get to the end of week, and into the weekend, up come all of these heavy showers and thunderstorms. Um, not particularly wet on Friday night, I have to say, with risk of torrential storms in places. Watch out for storm watch later on in the week. And then uh, beyond that, we turn drier through to the early part of next week. Although, around 22nd, we have got some more torrential thunderstorms potentially in this uh, southeastern corner. Um, after that, we're into those cooler northwesterly winds once again. These are the ops on the table within the ECM on Sol day 4, day 10. From the Icelandic Met Office, it gets the 25th of August. 13 members of the ECM on have a ridge of high pressure to our west, so relatively dry, but quite cool and showery potentially with that i suppose 12 with uh low pressure over scandinavia high pressures out in the atlantic more of a northwesterly with that rather showery and cool eight with high pressure somewhere between iceland and scandinavia mostly dry but could be a little bit on the cool side with wind direction uh seven with low pressure over england and wales mid-atlantic ridge that looks quite cool and potentially wet six with a ridge of high pressure in the atlantic going up towards greenland maybe some sort of trough through here as well and dip in the jet stream uh and then five has us right under an area of high pressure so that's probably the warmest dry so i took him back to the eight here so that's an interesting scenario high pressure between Iceland and scandinavia and i reckon actually i'll say it could be cool i reckon with that we probably will be bringing more of an east south easterly flow there so that could be the hottest scenario that we've got uh, in two time, these are the options that we've got. They look very different, actually, by the time we get through to the end of the month. It gets to the 30th of August. Ten members of the ECM ensemble looking very unsettled, cool, and probably quite autumnal with that. Uh, nine, again, with low pressure through the west of Europe. That one also looking really quite unsettled. Another nine with high pressure north of Scotland. That could be drier, of course, winds in from the east. Uh, we've got uh, another nine down here with low pressure across the north and the west of Europe. High pressure in the Atlantic. That looks cool and unsettled. Eight um, with low pressure to our south southwest, high pressure towards Scandinavia. That's going to be drawing up wind from the south. Uh, so probably warm but unsettled. And six with low pressure to the north of country. Again, that's flat westerly, probably quite cool and wet. So I think message from Matt is whatever we get in the third week of August in terms of drier, warmer, hotter weather, probably make the most of it. Because the last week of the month might be turning um, somewhat autumnal. 
little taints of autumn, maybe, for the last week of August. We'll see. Uh, largely CFSB, 2 meter 500 millibar height, and I've broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from 15th to 21st of August. This week has high pressure over and to the east of the country. Should be mostly dry. And with winds coming up from a southeast south direction, should be quite warm or even hot as well. Week 2. Will be the 22nd, 28th of August. High pressure around Iceland. Again, mostly dry with that. And again, could be quite warm with wind direction from like a southerly, southeasterly, actually. But week three sees a big change. It's the 29th of August, 4th of September. As low pressure comes in off the Atlantic. This time, high pressure goes away. So, obviously, a change to much more unsettled weather there for months end and into. Uh, the beginning of September, and then week four is the 5th to the 11th of September, once more with low pressure over and to west of the country, and uh, that is looking unsettled and Atlantic trim as well, so maybe quite a wet start to September, that'd be a bit of a turn up of the book, wouldn't it, cool wet start to September, I haven't had one of those for quite a while, I don't think, um, but anyway, it's week three and four, so it's a long way off, as it's there for of reliable and subject change, so we shall see. Right, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please, can you like, share, subscribe, make sure you want to hear about, why not drop a comment, and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gaz Webbers, thank you so much, everybody, for doing that for us. Right, I'll just tell you what's happening tomorrow, Gaz, 6 a.m. forecast, I'm hoping to get the USA forecast. I was unable to do it last week because the ECM, um, INT website, um, broke down basically every time I tried to <laughs> do the recording the charts wouldn't load up and at one point I wasn't even able to get on the website um so since then it seems to have settled down I've done two more videos you know with the EC extended but one of those actually today um and well last night and it seems to be working a lot better so hopefully whatever the issue was they'll buy it out and I'll be able to get that USA forecast um tomorrow and we'll be live streaming of course we will at uh, 6 p.m going to live stream by 10 to 14 daring may even do a little mini storm watch live with that as well wouldn't that be exciting so um lots to look forward to tomorrow but for today's videos that's all for now thank you so much for watching and uh bye for now